Hi everyone, it's David and we're back for episode 12 of Restoring Delight in the Word of God. And in this episode we're going to be focusing on study Bibles. Now I can't in any way begin to cover everything that's out there as far as study Bibles. There are some that have kind of stood the test of time and been around for a while. But there's constantly new study Bibles on the market, old ones going away. And so if you find one that you think would be useful to you, then I would encourage you not to hesitate too long before you're able to get it because most of them again do just kind of show up and then disappear and then it gets harder and harder to find them and so there's just too many to mention um, I'm gonna blow through the ones that I have just to give you kind of an idea but mainly talk about the genres of study Bibles that I keep I've got 16 on the table here and the reason I have 16 is because uh, you know one of the misconceptions about study Bibles is you know there's gonna be the perfect study Bible with all the information that I want and need that's out there and I haven't come across that study Bible yet because again study Bibles are so limited and the information that they can bring you within the context of just a one volume book and so the way I use study Bibles mainly is to get me started on a course and the type of information that I'm seeking or, or looking for and so they might have some perspectives that I didn't think about and then it would give me greater direction in a commentary or encyclopedia or what word study or something to to look up later and so I really use the study Bibles more as a launching pad and uh, oftentimes they do have really good notes in there that I wouldn't find anywhere else and different study tools are going to focus on different things and so you can't pack everything into one study Bible I think it's probably impossible the one that's probably done that the best is the ESV study Bible that's been a really good study Bible if you're going to just have one um, there's a few that I would probably like, hmm, if I could just have one, it would just, I don't know, there's a few of them that, that are really good. So I, I don't know if I can narrow it down to one, but as far as being the study Bible, if you're a person that says, I only want one Bible, I want a study Bible so I can have a little bit of clarity and depth, then I really like the ESV study Bible. The keyword study Bible is good too, and there's some other really good topical ones. So I'm not doing a very good job at narrowing it down, anyway. but I'll just show you what's available and you can see what you like, what kind of information you're seeking, and we'll go from there. Without getting too much into the video I want to do on the quality publishers that bind them really nice, you'll notice that in the study Bibles, most of them that I have are hardback Bibles. And it's because the study Bible publishers, most of them don't set out really to make it a quality Bible that's got a really good binding that's going to last with a really good cover. Crossways done some neat things. There's been some other publishers that have done some neat things to contribute to making a higher quality Bible, but uh, those are more expensive and people tend to lend themselves more to purchasing like one with a synthetic cover or bonded leather um, but I stay away from synthetic covers and I stay away from bonded leather those begin to quickly fall apart through use especially the, the synthetic covers is sometimes just shocking to me how quick they, they would fall apart and so no study Bibles well I shouldn't say no study Bible but the majority of study Bibles aren't really built in a manner that can handle constant use and so my constant use Bibles are not study Bibles and so again in this side we're getting into more of the reference tools but uh, hey if, if you want a study Bible for your only Bible then go for it for study Bibles I stick to hardbacks because very few publishers will put something out in genuine leather and if they do it's usually not a sewn binding that's going to last either and so I found the hinges on the hardbacks are a lot easier and, and better to work with last a lot longer I do have a few study Bibles that are in genuine leather for the publishers that put those out anyway that that's all I'll say about that I'll get into more of the quality Bible stuff later but I'm gonna tip the camera down and just show you real quick glances of Bibles I've accumulated that have been really helpful to me personally one of the ones that I have that I kind of keep in the genre of a commentary-esque study Bible that gives you some interpretation and, and annotation is uh, just this uh, Oxford Annotated Bible. There's really, there's some good information in it, but if you're looking for an in-depth study Bible, this is not going to be it. This is uh, just a nice read and it's got a, a little bit of extra notes and annotations. So it's, it's really kind of in between the study Bible and just a regular Bible that would have cross-referencing and some translator notes. This was one of the ones that I mentioned is the Crossway ESV study Bible. This one's in brown cowhide and they actually did a pretty good job with the binding just to get snobby a little bit. The only thing that I, I really don't like, I don't know if you can tell, but you can hear it, the wrinkling and the gutter because the Bible's so thick. 
there and you can kind of see some of the wrinkling in the gutter. That was kind of a disappointment. Most publishers don't call that a flaw, but it's annoying, so I call it a flaw. But other than that, I mean, the information in this study Bible has been incredible for a study Bible. This is probably one of the most detailed, thought out study Bibles, and they had a whole lot of contributors. Anytime you can get something that was done and uh, the project was completed by many, many authors with different backgrounds, you're going to get more of a well-rounded contextual contributions in your study Bible or anything for that matter, rather than one guy's bias or one guy's slant into it. And so I, you really want to stay away from one man's opinion, just to get different perspectives, not to say that everything that you read is true. Here's another one that's kind of a commentary-esque. I don't know if you can even see the whole thing. This one is a dude. It is the Dake's Annotated Reference. Bible and I really like this Bible I don't agree with some of the things that I read in there but still his uh, positions that he holds are very well documented and written and I wanted to open this up to show you what this is like and so this section here and here you see these lines that's the actual Bible all these are the notes that are annotated in here so this is this guy's own personal notes and every page has, has got this many notes and actually at the end of the books 12 Okay, so here's the end of Daniel, and so he kind of runs out of space, even in what I just showed you. And so just the book of Daniel, that's only 12 chapters, he still has all these reference notes in the back. And so this is a good one, and I really enjoy it, but again, this is one man's opinion. And it's a very well written and thought out and documented opinion, and I enjoy some of his notes, and even though I disagree with some of them, I still appreciate his clarity and able to articulate some of the things that he believes because it either strengthens me and why I believe what I believe or it changes my opinion because maybe I don't believe the truth. This one is the A.W. Tozer Study Bible. There's another one that they did with some of his notes, the Pursuit of God Study Bible. This isn't really a, a sit down and, and study with study Bible. All this is, if you like A.W. Tozer, which I love A.W. Tozer, he's written many books and printed a lot of articles and so all they did was just take from his articles and plug them in, into a, a King James Version of the Bible here. This next one is hands down one of my favorite study Bibles that I have. It is the Revival Study Bible. And this one is incredible. So at the beginning here, all the contributors from this Bible go back centuries and there's contributors that are still alive today. And so you flip through here and it's got the initials and a short biographical section of just the different revivalists or ones that contributed through their writings. And so what the Revival Study Bible did is they took different people throughout history and present day, took from their writings or their sermons and plugged them into the Bible, but it's all about revival. Now National revival, geographical revival, and personal renewal. This is just a killer study Bible. This is one of my most referenced ones just because the notes are so much fun. I am a, a huge student of revival and a brokenhearted intercessor for God to do it in my generation. And so I just, I love this thing and they'll have different articles from these guys just century past that just burn for the Lord. And what's really cool about this one too is it comes with a little CD and everything, all the authors that they referenced here, they have more materials to go back and, and read. Where they grab the material from. So Revival Study Bible, I love the heck out of this thing and I highly recommend it. I already showed you this one, this one's the Life Application Study Bible. This is one of the synthetic covers, but I had, I had already mentioned it began falling apart. This has got the Life Application Study Notes, but I wasn't too crazy about that. We've already talked about this one, but this one's just special to me because it's the one that I had laying around that I gave myself to when I first came to the Lord. I'm getting into more specific Bibles that are useful for the specific genre that they offer. This one is the Names of God Study Bible, and it's in the God's Word translation, which is all right, but I honestly don't read that translation. But this one's kind of neat, though, because it's got a word study on the different names and, and titles of God. And I would add, I do have a friend that came up with more names and titles for God. This isn't at all an exhaustive list but it's a really good place to get you started and they still cover a whole lot and so there's a lot of cool information in this one these two I'm just gonna bring out at the same time because they're both the same thing it's a keyword study Bible I've got one in the King James that was given to me by a dear friend uh, Jerry if you're watching thank you so much 
I use this all the time still. Both of them are laid out the same. I have one of each, again, because the, the New American Standard and the King James are, are based off of two different manuscripts, and so those are the two I look at most often. But this one's really neat. There's some good reference material in here, but the main thing is these words that are underlined. It has the Strong's words, and sometimes it'll even have the uh, grammatical codes in, in front of these other ones. And you can go to the back, and you have your dictionary back here, your Hebrew and your Greek dictionary. And then for the grammatical codes, it'll send you to this key back here, and it'll tell you what to look at, and it, it begins to explain that. They have some grammatical features in Greek and Hebrew that we don't have in English, so it's really kind of neat to learn about those as well. So it not only shows you the words, but it will teach you a little bit about the grammar actually too, which is quite amazing. Anyway, so you can see the information in this that's available is way different than the ESV study Bible, which both those are incredible, but then if you're just going to have one, it would be dependent on, well, what kind of information are you going to want to have access to? Are you going to want to have commentator's notes, or would you like to get into the Greek and Hebrew? This one is the well-known Thompson Chain reference. This is one that's been around for a while, like that other one that Keyword Study Bible's been around for quite some time. They're known for their heavy, heavy cross-referencing. And so like, for instance, this one, verse 24, make no friendship with an angry man. And so, and to the margin here, it says to go to item number 276, evil associations. So you go to the back here and everything's numbered and there's thousands of these topics. Okay. 276, associations comma evil is where it had pointed us to. And so all these are going to be scriptures that really all, all chain together. The major selling point of the Thompson chain is, you know, that's pretty much the Bible right here. And then you've got all this cross-referencing right here. One thing I will show you real quick, this is not a study Bible, but this is what I was mentioning on the last episode, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. This is available on the Blue Letter Bible app, and it's what they use to show their cross-references. But this is a whole key for cross-referencing. So if you look up in the King James, what word you're looking to cross-reference, you look for that book, chapter and verse, and the word in that verse, and it will give you the cross references just for that word and so this is not a Bible all this is all cross references treasury of scripture knowledge is available on that blue letter Bible app just kind of have it at your fingertips if you prefer that but again I prefer something physical in my hand besides something electronic these two this is a Jewish study Bible and the Jewish annotated New Testament by Oxford and so these were developed by them to give us a little bit of a, a Jewish perspective on the faith and this one's really valuable too because even some of the cr contributors to this one come with a Jewish perspective and they might not necessarily believe in, in Yeshua some of them them that annotated did but it still kind of gives you some insight into some Jewish culture and Jewish thinking which can be very valuable as we appreciate those guys and, and love them dearly. Christianity stands solidly on, on Judaism, and I'm one of those that believes it's time to uh, turn our hearts back to our fathers. And a, a lot of really terrible things have been done to the Jewish people, even in the name of Jesus. It's time to repair that. This next one is the Chronological Study Bible. It's exactly what it says there. It's the Bible in chronological order, or at least it's my wife's favorite. So it's... Anyway. So my wife uses this quite extensively. She actually uses it more than I do. But uh, this one goes ahead and puts it all in order for you. And so if you're looking to sit down and read the story of the Bible, just kind of cover to cover, then this is really, really cool, especially in reading the Psalms or the prophets, because once you get outside of the books of the law and the books of history, everything you read, the poetry and the prophets, all happened within that time period. And so when you read the prophets, the best thing to do really is to connect them to the king, to the culture that they prophesied under, or the psalms. When was the song written? What was going on in the person's life that wrote that? Here's a newer one to me that I just picked up. It's the first century study Bible. And so the study notes are from a man who had spent some time in Israel and done a lot of research on the first century church and just early believers, early Jewish believers and early Gentile believers and wrote uh, some study notes from their perspective on what their worldview would have been reading through the Old Testament and walking out the New Testament. And so he's got a lot of really good notes. This one has been very helpful in a lot of study. 
this one, the Apologetic Study Bible, this isn't the I'm Sorry Bible, this is the In Defense of Study Bible. A lot of people sometimes see apologetics and they're like, we don't have to apologize for anything. It's like, no, we're not, but we're learning how to defend the faith. Archaeology, science, uh, different things. And so there's a lot of really, really good articles in here. They have some notes, but the, the highlights to me are the articles. So there's tons of good stuff. Is the New Testament trustworthy? Uh, the Trinity, is it possible for God to be both one and three? Um, has historical criticism proved that the Bible is false? And uh, are the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses compatible with the Bible. I mean, there's just tons and tons of really good articles kind of coming at it from really common questions that come at you, and, and rightfully so. I think a lot of times we'll encounter someone that's questioning the faith, and we get into defensive mode, and it's really just our pride and our fear because we don't know how to answer them. And this is a really good tool to be able to lend yourself to understanding why you believe what you believe, and to be able to defend it in a loving and a gentle manner. This one is the Archaeological Study Bible. They've got a lot of good articles about kind of some of the history, the cultural context, and archaeological sites. And so this has been a really neat one to reference as well. And so that's the last one. All right, so that's most of my study Bibles. I do have one that's the Schofield Reference Bible. When these first came out, it was one of the first of its kind that really began to gain some popularity. And the mistake people made is when they would open up the Word, they would see Scripture, and then they would see this guy's study notes on the same page as Scripture. And so people begin to just kind of subconsciously accept these study notes as the Word of God. And so I was saving this one at the end on purpose just to use this as an example to just caution you on it. If you're reading a study Bible and anything that I'm gonna show you going forward as far as the practical tools to dive into, I mean, these things are not scripture and they're not gonna replace your prayer life. I mean, you might be able to study and sound smart to some people, but God will see right through that mess unless you cultivate intimate relationship with Him and intimate prayer life with Him where you can hear His voice when you're reading the Word and so these things help and He can guide you through this stuff as you're searching for the information that you're looking for and asking him first, letting him guide you through the search of just the different tools that are available. But don't make the same mistake that so many made in the generation that this one came out and accepting the commentator's notes or the reference notes as the Word of God. They are not the Word of God. They are fallible men's words and that's one of the dangers that you have to be aware of, especially study Bibles and seeing someone's notes on the same page as the Word of God. So it's good. It's an awesome thing to use study Bibles, to use reference tools, but do not let that replace your prayer life. When you have questions and you're asking the Lord and when you're seeking out this information, don't stop when you've read the study note. Let that be something that guides you into a deeper look at what's really there. So anyway, I hope that helps with your understanding of study Bibles. If you're interested in one, if you're not interested in one, or if I just like made it even worse, and you're like, oh shoot, now I need that one and that one, and that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. Just take your time, you'll turn around in 10 years and be like, wow, look at all these study Bibles.